Now, from the Columbia Basin, your local news source, this is iFiber One News, presented in high definition. The number one source for real-time local news, local sports headlines, and our very own Weather Center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. With your iFiber One News team, reporting news in real time as it's happening. From the iFiber Communications HD broadcast studio in Ephrata, Washington, this is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Welcome to iFiber One News Weekend Edition. I'm Cody Johnson with your news from around the Columbia Basin for Friday, November 16th. Tonight we get the latest on a shooting at a Moses Lake gas station Thursday afternoon. We'll also look back at one Soap Lake woman's attempt to change the name of her town's namesake. We'll bring you a preview of some of this weekend's activities and take another look at some of the viewers' favorite stories from this past week. In sports, we get a preseason glimpse of the Big Bend Lady Vikings basketball team. And we have the latest weather forecast for the Columbia Basin from the iFiber One Weather Center. Our top story, Moses Lake police say the two suspects arrested after a shooting in Moses Lake yesterday were from out of the area. Freddie Galston, a 44-year-old from Dal Paulus, California, was booked into Grant County Jail for attempted murder in the first degree. He, his alleged accomplice, 23-year-old James Boyd Jr. from Fort Washington, Maryland, was booked for aiding and abetting attempted murder in the first degree. Police stopped the men in an SUV yesterday afternoon about a quarter mile south of Road 3 and State Route 17. Witnesses at the Astro Quick Mart on Pioneer Way said the men left the scene after a 40-year-old Moses Lake man was shot in the parking lot about 1.20 p.m. Police reportedly found a small amount of methamphetamines and two handguns in the SUV, one of which is believed to be involved in the shooting. The shooting victim was transported to a Spokane hospital for treatment of a gunshot wound to his side. Police do not have a motive for the shooting at this time and are asking anyone with information to call 509-764-3887. A state committee is expecting to finally make a decision on whether or not to change the name of Soap, Soap Lake to Lake Smokayam. The Washington State Committee on Geographic Names held a hearing on, in Olympia today on this proposal and other potential changes from around the state. Since the idea was proposed last year, it has drawn hundreds of comments from the town's residents and others, most of them negative. As of press time, officials hadn't released their decision on whether they'll recommend the change. To give you a little background, we bring you a story Ryan Lancaster reported in August on the woman behind the idea. A proposal to change the name of Soap Lake to Lake Smokayam is back in the public eye this week. The state agency that will decide the matter has put the item on its October agenda. The Washington State Committee on Geographic Names is considering whether to change the lake's name at the recommendation of Soap Lake resident Bonnie Holt Morehouse and Moses Lake historian Robert Ruby. Under their proposal, the city of Soap Lake would keep its current title while the lake itself would include Smokayam or Smokeyam. Holt Morehouse says the Salish term translates to healing waters. When I was a child here, um, I had heard that the name the native name for the lake was Smokeem, and I um, wondered, I, I always wondered, but I never did anything about it. Last year, she and Ruby made a petition to change the name in part to draw attention to the area's history. All of these lakes up this canyon are ancient, sacred lakes, and we use them to our purpose, and we don't really acknowledge the value or the um, the part of ancient history that they are. Holt Morehouse said her research shows the lake has also gone by Sanitarium Lake and Alkali Lake, but was never given an official title. In 1919, the town was incorporated and under the name of Soap Lake. Um, the lake was never officially named. But others in the community feel the lake should retain the title it's become known by. It's a landmark, everybody knows it. Why mess with something that's good? 
Well, we would lose Soap Lake on the map because <laughs> everybody knows where it's at, you know, and I think it's great. Robert Stotts said he first visited Soap Lake with some Army buddies 50 years ago and was back with his wife this week. I can understand why you'd want to change or some people would want to change it back to the native uh, terminology or name because there are so many things that uh, uh, w would probably help heal some of the things that have been done in the past. But for me, it'll always be Soap Lake. The Geographic Names Committee held an initial hearing on the name change in November and decided to defer their decision at a May meeting. If the committee accepts the name change, the proposal will be forwarded with a recommendation for approval to the Washington State Board on Geographic Names, which oversees the official establishment of names throughout the state. The committee is accepting public comments on the proposal in the run-up to making a final determination October 19. For instructions on how to submit remarks, visit SoapLakeForLocals.com. For iFiber One News, this is Ryan Lancaster reporting. This weekend has some great events on tap, starting with the Mac Holiday Party tonight. The Moses Lake Museum and Art Center is holding its free open house from 5 to 9 in the Moses Lake Civic Center. There's live music by Carrie Marguerite, beverages by Camas Cove Cellars, and Ancient Lakes Brewery, and a catered buffet by Michaels on the Lake. The featured artist this year is Kim Matthews Wheaton, a 15-year resident of Moses Lake, whose work will be displayed at the gallery through January 4th. Kids are welcome to stop in and have their photo taken with Santa and take part in children's activities. Moses Lake's second annual turkey trot is Saturday, starting out at 9 p.m. from Moses Lake's Blue Heron Park. Registration is $15 with proceeds supporting cancer research through the Susan G. Komen Foundation. Runners registered for the 5K event can pick up their race number at the Moses Lake Fire Department public meeting room tonight from 5.30 to 7 p.m. or at the starting line Saturday morning from 7 to 8.30. Awards will be given at 10.15 a.m. at the park with medals for first, second, and third place finishers of each division. Also Saturday, St. Rose of Lima Catholic School in Efreda is holding its annual holiday bazaar from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the school located at 520 Nat Washington Way. More than 40 ven vendors are expected to participate, bringing a variety of handmade crafts and gift items. A hot lunch and jumbo, and jumbo cinnamon rolls will also be available for purchase. Columbia Basin residents have tonight and tomorrow to swing by the Moses Lake Safeway store and donate to a food drive put on by Samaritan Hospital employees. Here with the story is Ryan Lancaster. Samaritan Hospital is holding its annual turkey and canned food drive this weekend in front of the Moses Lake Safeway store on Pioneer Way. About 60 employees are expected to volunteer roughly 190 hours to the cause so that people in the Moses Lake and Warden communities don't have to go without this Thanksgiving. Hospital employees Donna Weber and Ray Leanne Baker started collecting food and monetary donations today. We'd like to get a turkey in every oven this year. Volunteers will be at the door from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Friday and Saturday. They'll have prepackaged donations available at the door with all proceeds going to the Moses Lake Food Bank. The goal this year is to collect at least 500 turkeys. Samaritan Hospital employees have been holding a turkey and canned food drive for 11 years now. For i Fiber One News, this is Ryan Lancaster reporting. The Quincy Recreation Department has taken a group of kids ages 5 to 14 to the Moses Lake Bowl Arcade Monday, November 21st. The cost is $15 per participant and the latest day to register is Sunday by 4 p.m. There's space for as many as 16 kids and, the cha and chaperones will be provided. A $5 game card and a pizza lunch is included. You can call 509-787-3523 with questions or to register. We'll be right back after this. these messages with your forecast from the iFiber One Weather Center.